So Apple have just had their March 8th spring event, which was called Peak Performance, in which they released a bunch of new, really exciting stuff. But as usual, there was one product which really jumped out at me, which was the iPad Air. And there was a second kind of different product which I wasn't really expecting and then I ended up buying it. So <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about those two things today, but let's start with that new iPad Air. As you know, on this channel, I really love iPads and I was really, really excited to see the iPad Air jump up to the M1 chip. I think a lot of people were expecting it to get the A15 chip that's in the iPad mini, which is a little powerhouse, by the way, that chip can really handle a lot. But seeing it jump up to M1 was a really awesome surprise. And not only does it get all the benefits of the M1, you're getting the eight gigabytes of RAM as well on the base model, which is just pretty incredible as far as a tablet goes. But very excitingly for me, they're also releasing a purple colorway. And I think the other colors are the same, or maybe slightly changed, but otherwise they look the same. But the new purple one is really nice. As you know, I've been doing a lot of purple stuff recently, especially on my Instagram. So when I saw that was coming in purple, I was like, that's awesome. It's gonna match the mini, it's gonna look great. You're also getting center stage as well, which I think a lot of people will like. If you're not too sure what that is, it's a 12 megapixel front facing camera, which is ultra wide and it can follow your head. If you're talking to someone on a voice call or someone else comes into shot, it'll just go wider and include them as well, which is really, really awesome. I think a lot of people will like that. And it's actually really nice to see that slowly coming to all of Apple's products. I'm sure it probably won't be long until we see that in the iPhone and everything else that they do. Everything else is pretty much staying the same. You're getting the same base storage and all the accessories are working like normal, like the Apple Pencil Generation 2 and the Magic Keyboard. But the only thing which kind of confuses me and it has done for a really long time is if you want the base iPad Air at 64 gigabytes, like maybe you're really great at working in the cloud or maybe you, you don't really want to do anything more than consume content on it, then that's fine. And the pricing at 569 pounds is pretty good for that. But the problem is, 64 gigabytes if you want to create stuff is is quite low. You can make it work, of course you can, but I would almost always recommend going up to 256 gigabytes. But that brings you to this odd price point of 719 pounds. And that's only like 40 pounds off going for the M1 iPad Pro. And the difference between those two now pretty much is only the 120 hertz display. And the problem is if you use one of those displays, you realize how like, wonderful it is. And when you go back to a 60 Hertz display, it's still fine. It takes a bit of adjusting, but you just don't want to. So it makes that decision even harder. Your M1 iPad Pro starts at a base storage of 128 gig as well, which is, you know, pretty serviceable. Most people can get away with that. I could probably get away with that. So yeah, it's still got this odd pricing structure, which makes it really easy to just jump up to the next one when you might not actually need that. I've touched on this loads before on other videos, but I still find it an odd pricing structure. And I really wish it just started at 128 gig because I think a lot of people would jump in on the iPad Air there. That's a great storage point to begin with. I will certainly be picking one up. So if you guys have any questions about it, pop it in the comments below and I'll make sure I try and get to that in the video. And I'm just excited to see how it hold up against the iPad Air and the iPad Pro and all those sort of things. So make sure you're subscribed and um, we'll check that out for sure. And I'll get the purple one as well, obviously. Okay, so secondly, and this was more of a surprise announcement, I think, unless you're into the leaking world, I saw it a day early, but I wasn't overly sure, was the Mac Studio. And I really, really have to talk about this because I wasn't expecting to put any money down that day or anything like that, but as soon as I saw it announced, it felt like that computer was aimed directly at me. It was like, this is what you've been looking for, you know, go and grab it. I looked around at the configurations a little bit and then I ended up just picking one up, which is really, really rare for me. I'm usually very picky about what I want and it takes me a while to decide, but this kind of just, yeah, blew me away. If you're not sure what the Mac Studio is, it's basically a really beefed up iPad mini and it's got these insane chips in them. The base model starts with the M1 Max with the 24 core GPU and 32 gig of RAM. And then that goes all the way up to the brand new M1 Ultra chip, which is two Max chips just chucked together like that, which goes up to like 128 gigabytes of RAM and 64 GPU cores. And you know, it's a 20 core CPU. It's, it's just basically two M1 maxed, maxed out, pushed together to make this new Ultra chip. And you know, for all intents and purposes, it looks insane. But the one that I actually ended up going for was the kind of maxed out M1 Max version. So the 32 core GPU with the 32 gigabytes of RAM and uh, a terabyte of storage. I did think about the Ultra, but 
you know, I'm, I'm not doing massively crazy complex things. I edit 4K video a lot, I edit photos a lot, and I do a fair bit of design work, and that's pretty much it. And I don't think for that, I really need to jump up to the Ultra. I'm not jumping into Blender, I'm not doing anything crazy with motion graphics. So it felt like that was the right configuration for me. It's also got an SD card reader on the front, which I really love, but I also think it's a really huge statement from Apple about what this computer is for. You know, this is a creation first device with the power hopefully behind it to really push that. You know, this isn't particularly for gaming. It's not particularly for writing up word essays or browsing the internet. This is a powerful machine to help people push their creativity out. And that's why it really spoke to me. If you've been watching this channel for a long time, you know I've been stuck between Mac and Windows for a really long time. That's my Windows computer behind me, custom build. You know, I absolutely love it. And I've got a MacBook here and I've always been a MacBook Pro user. And for desktop, I've always been a Windows user. And there's never felt like there's been a real good kind of solution for both of my needs until this Mac Studio came along. And it's like, wow, I can literally just take that out, pop the Mac Studio in and be good to go. And look, I'm, I don't game on my PC anymore. I haven't done for the longest time. I've got a PS5 for that sort of thing. And I don't think it's gonna be good for gaming. So if you want a gaming computer, you should probably look elsewhere. So that computer really took me by surprise and it just like was like, wow, that's what I've been looking for. Like a beefy Mac, which is really nicely designed. I can pop it on my desk. It's not gonna take up loads of space. I've been obsessed with making my PC as small as it can be. And this just looks like the answer for me. Really excited to get that one. Want to know if it can replace my Windows PC and we'll see how we get along. I've been a big Windows lover for the longest time, but you know, this could well be the end of Windows for me. Apple also announced a new iPhone uh, 13 Pro in green, which looks okay on the Pro model and ugh, on the <laughs> standard model. And a new SE, which has got 5G and an A15 chip. That looks amazing. And I really want to have a look at that too. But anyway, that pretty much rounds up my thoughts for the Apple event. I really liked it. It was a lot more exciting than I expected it to be. And yeah, it should be cool. Anyway, this video is just to let you know that loads of videos are coming soon. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you all in the next one.